Hey guys, welcome to part 5 of the masterclass. Um, this is not the fifth tutorial in the whole series, but uh, it's the fifth main tutorial. Uh, and of course we have uh, those two other quick tips videos, which um, you could skip actually and still be able to follow along with the, with the rest. If we go back to the preview, and uh, this is the first time I'm referencing this directly uh, in the series so far. And uh, throughout, from now on, I may jump back to this quite a lot to just, uh, you know, see where we are and uh, what we need to do next. But uh, basically, there is no way we could uh, create this uh, final shape using just splines and uh, the standard extrude tool. We have to start doing some uh, manual modeling and uh, but what we've done so far is a good foundation for that. I'm gonna take the splines out of this uh, extrude and uh, let me just remove this. I'm gonna get another extrude and uh, drop everything in here. And uh, this is just easier than trying to reset uh, all of the different values across the entire thing. Just grab a new one. I'm gonna take hierarchical so that everything is being um, extruded. And uh, actually, in fact, let's uh, not do that. I'm actually just gonna get all of the splines here right click and then connect and delete so now it's a single spline and uh, i don't have to worry about switching this on or off i want to go to the spline and under intermediate points let's set this to subdivided uh, which was already set i'm going to set the angle to 90 and the maximum length to 10. And uh, if you recall, something I talked about in a previous tutorial, I normalized the height of the whole logo to be close to 200, as you can see here. And so now when I use values like 10, I know it's going to give me the correct number of segments and uh, the right amount of distancing between each uh, segment because that's the same value I was using in the preview and uh, the development of the idea in the, in the first place. So I really recommend you use the same numbers as I'm doing, uh, just so we stay on the same page. Let's say at this point, uh, you perhaps spot an error in your logo. Maybe one of the sides is too short, too long, um, too curved and so on. But uh, you don't want to go back to, say, Illustrator or Photoshop to make a change there. You can actually make quite a lot of changes within Cinema 4D. So let me show you what I mean. If I just uh, quickly disable the extrude object here, let's go to point mode. And uh, now I can freely just uh, select any of these points, uh, move them around. Um, this curves over here, we can um, say if I go to the front view, say we want to change how this curve looks, um, you could just add a soft interpolation on that corner. And uh, if you press E and uh, hold shift, you can just grab any handle here and change how this curve over here looks. Now over here we have another handle which is having an influence. Uh, on this curve too. So you would have to adjust uh, these one by one and uh, and so on. But you know, the options for changing what the splines look like is virtually limitless, even when you get to a stage like this. There are also other operations besides moving individual points and uh, sides. For example, maybe I think the parts which make up the V uh, are too wide, and I just wanna shrink the total area space uh, of this. Of course, I could do this using uh, manual controls. You know, I would move this down, for example, get these two points, move them closer to each other using the scale here, or just by moving them uh, individually. And just doing this, I could end up with a narrower looking V. So this is narrower here than it originally was. And uh, I could just keep doing this until the whole letter is narrower overall. But this is a lot of uh, effort. And uh, there are tools which can help you to do this uh, much easier. 
So let me select a point here and press U followed by W to select the rest of the points in this loop. And uh, now I can right click and uh, if I go to create outline, I can left click and just drag either to the left or to the right. And uh, this will either enlarge my outline or shrink it. There's a slight mismatch uh, happening here and I'm glad actually because I can show you how to correct this. Everywhere else, when I go to the right, uh, it's expanding and when I go to the left, it's um, contracting. But you can see that uh, the top section here and uh, this other little section is doing the opposite. These are not moving in the same direction each time. And uh, that's just because of the way the points have been sequenced. And uh, it goes all the way back to how we drew this. Uh, in one instance, I may have drawn the V going in this direction, in a clockwise direction, uh, but perhaps I drew the top section here in an anti-clockwise uh, direction. But uh, this is easy, I can reverse this. Simply select a single point, right click and reverse sequence. And now this sequence of points is going in the same direction as everything else uh, except for this other little section we noticed. So let's do the same here, just uh, reverse this whole sequence. And uh, now if I press Ctrl and A to select everything, right click and go to create outline, everything expands outward when I go to the right and contracts when I go to the left. And uh, that's how you solve that little uh, mismatch. Anyway, so going back to what I wanted to do in the first place, let's uh, select everything again. Go to create outline. And uh, this time make sure that uh, create new object is ticked uh, over here so that when you do the operation here and release left click, we now have a new object made up of that um, newly defined outline. And uh, what I could do here is uh, say select the V, U and W to select all of the points. I could just right click and split and that's going to create a new spline of just the, the V here. So if I disable the others, we now have the narrower V section. If I go back to the original at the top here, I could select the V section and uh, just uh, delete this completely and then join just the V section and the rest of the original logo uh, by connecting and delete. And uh, basically we don't need this other section over here. And uh, that's how I would make that uh, adjustment of you know narrowing one part of the logo. And uh, you can do this to different parts if you, uh, if you need to. Of course, I uh, quite like how the logo looked anyway, so that was just for demonstrational purposes. We're going to revert back to the original and uh, I will show you some other operations you can do. Let's keep working on just the V again and uh, I'm going to right click, go to chamfer and uh, let me zoom in closer here and uh, over on the right side, make sure that uh, real time update is uh, ticked. And uh, if you just click anywhere and start dragging to the right, and now you can see we are rounding those corners off. And uh, maybe you don't wanna round them off, you could just uh, tick flat. And uh, you're basically doing the same thing except it's a sharp angle. And uh, this is something we're actually gonna be doing later on uh, to the logo but uh, we're gonna be doing it in a slightly different uh, method. But uh, if you go back to the preview, you can see that uh, these corners here are not the way they were originally traced. Uh, the same thing up here, uh, down here, and, uh, and so on. So we'll be doing that soon, but uh, not yet. One last thing I could show you before we move on is how to add extra segments. Uh, that's very simple. There's two ways you can do this. You can get the knife tool, which you can get by pressing M followed by K for knife. And you can just start cutting this and adding extra points. And then you can use this to change the shape uh, of the logo uh, even further if you need to. You can also select any two points and subdivide the area in between. So right click subdivide all the way down here and uh, say I have five subdivisions 
and now we have five new different segments just like this and uh, you could change those to change the shape uh, once again so that should give you some uh, options on what you can do with uh, splines once you already have them within uh, Cinema 4D. Okay, I'm going to remove these extra points I just placed here. I don't uh, really need them. And uh, I'm going to re-enable the extrude. Go to the object tab here and I'm going to set the depth to zero. So we just have a flat wafer thin plane logo. Uh, like this and I'm gonna make a copy of this and just uh, hold ALT and uh, double click the little circles next to it to hide it. Go to the original extrude object and hit C to make this uh, editable and we have to go all the way down and uh, hit C again. If that doesn't work the first time and give you an editable uh, plane object uh, it's because you had a uh, hierarchical ticked. So let me untick that and hit C again. And uh, this time we'll have our editable polygon uh, created for us under here. So let's pull this out and uh, we can delete this uh, null. And uh, now this is uh, what we're going to be using to build the rest of the logo. We can now operate on this in uh, point mode, which we already are in. Uh, we can go to edge mode, which deals with just uh, these lines on the edges. And uh, we also have polygon mode, which deals with individual polygon faces like so. I'm going to leave this here and uh, continue in the next tutorial by uh, looking at those modes again and start using the more advanced modeling tools. See you then.